Hey everyone, Theo here. Today I'm reviewing the Prism Plus Nomad portable displays. First of all, a disclaimer, these are review units on loan from Prism Plus, a local company based here in Singapore that sells computer monitors and smart TVs. I've actually reviewed some of their products before. This video may be a bit long, so if you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written. The links are in the video description below, or use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this video. My reviews will be from the perspective of a visual content creator, someone who does graphic design, digital art, edits photos and videos. At the time of making this video, there are three products under the Nomad series. There is the Nomad 16, which is an LCD display. There is the Nomad Pro 16, which is also an LCD display, but comes with a touch screen and built-in battery. And there is the Nomad Ultra 4K, which is an OLED display that comes with a touch screen and built-in battery. Here's a table showing the specifications for the three models. Please note that the price I've listed here will vary depending on whether there is any promotion and Prism Plus likes to run on and off promotions very regularly. These are the items included in the box. There is a flip cover case and stand. And this particular design comes with the OLED display. For the LCD displays, they are using a different design for the flip cover case. This is a one meter long USB-C video cable. The length is shorter than my preference, which is why in this review, you will see me use my own longer cable. This is a 1.8 meter long power cable. It's actually labeled here. This cable cannot be used to transmit video. The third cable is a mini HDMI to full-size HDMI cable. The small one will go to the display. If you are using HDMI for connection, you will need to connect an additional USB cable for power because HDMI doesn't transmit power. This is a 45 watt USB-C charger. It comes with a double flat pin that you can push up and you can use this adapter here to get the three pins that we use in Singapore. I actually prefer this case because this is easier and faster to fold and unfold. So you just fold this into a triangular base and prop up the display. It's very quick. As for this, you have to fold this into a triangle here on the back. This is the very typical tablet kind of flip cover case. The flip cover cases will protect all four sides, the front and the back. This is made with some silicone material and there are cutouts for the speakers and the buttons and the ports. The interior of the cover is this velvet-like material which will collect dust. And on the back of the case is this textured surface which is quite nice. The physical design for these two displays is almost similar. This is the LCD, this is the OLED. For the LCD, it's 8mm thick, which is quite thin. And this is how it looks on the back. For the OLED display, this is 6.8mm thick. This is slightly thinner than this. This is also very thin. I'm not sure what material they are using for the back. It could be plastic or it could be metal, but I like the matte textured surface on it. The other visible difference is this vertical or horizontal band, which is of a different color compared to the body. The top and bottom are rounded off. The sides are flat. And here you can see one speaker. There is also another speaker on the side. The audio quality from this one watt speaker is just so-so. This is the right side of the display. The power button is here with a power light indicator there. These are the two volume buttons which can be used to navigate the OSD menu. That's the other speaker. Mini HDMI port, two USB-C ports. These two are interchangeable so you can use either one for video or power. The design of the display is beautiful. I like the thin uniform bezels at the top and the sides. It's thicker at the bottom. They have the Prism Plus logo here, which is quite subtle. Right now, I have this display connected to my laptop using this USB-C cable. If there isn't enough power, the brightness is limited to just 50%. And what I'm saying applies to this particular model that does not have the built-in battery. So if you want to go up 
further in brightness, you have to attach additional power. With the extra power connected, now I can go up to 100% brightness. I measured a maximum brightness of 360 nits for the LCD and 308 nits for the OLED display. If you are using the display with the built-in battery, you just need one single video cable. You don't need two. For the OLED display with its internal battery, you can get 100% brightness with one single cable. However, when the battery runs out, one single cable is not sufficient to power this OLED. You need two cables. You can still get 50% brightness on the LCD with just one cable, but on this OLED display without its battery power, you need two cables. I've tested this with the Windows laptop, my MacBook Air, and the desktop Mac Mini. Without the battery on the OLED, it needs two cables to power it up. To get into the OSD, just do a quick press of the power button. If you press and hold, it's going to power off the display. So this is the OLED display that comes with the touch screen. Having a touch screen is very convenient when it comes to navigating the OSD menu. So these are the settings you can change, brightness, contrast, the volume. If the OSD menu is not present, you can just adjust the volume using the volume buttons. So these are the different color modes. We have gaming, Adobe RGB, sRGB, movie mode, and other modes. Depending on the mode you change here, it may lock some of the settings. For example, if you choose Adobe RGB, you won't be able to adjust the contrast here. So let me just set to user. And this is where you can adjust the color temperature uh, and the RGB. Here you can adjust the uh, chroma, color saturation, and sharpness. You can choose the display input. It would be chosen for you automatically depending on the cable you connect. But if you want to choose manually, you can do so here. The OSD button is for changing the OSD settings. This button here is to change the orientation. This battery button here allows you to charge an external device through the USB port here. If your display has an internal battery, it's going to drain the battery faster, obviously. On the OLED display and also on the other LCD, which comes with the built-in battery, there will be the battery indicator here. The display will show you a warning dialog when the battery drops to 10% and 5%. The battery life is rated at 4 hours. For this OLED display, I usually run it at 40% brightness and I can get around 4 hours. Not exactly 4 hours, but very close. When I increase it to 50%, the battery life is slightly shorter. You can definitely get at least 3.5 hours of use with the internal battery. What I'm saying applies to the OLED display. Another thing to note is with internal battery, with usage, the battery capacity will be reduced in the future. The touch screen also supports finger gesture shortcuts, so you can zoom in and out. You can draw with your finger if you want to. You can rotate, you can pan around. Pen support is not good. This, by the way, is a rubber tip stylus. The display doesn't register or detect the pen that easily. And when I write or draw, there is very often broken lines. Colors on both LCD and OLED displays look great out of the box. I have already color calibrated the displays, so the colors look quite similar to me. And the viewing angles are terrific as well. The colors don't shift much when you view the displays from extreme angles. The brightness for both the LCD and the OLED look very similar to me, but due to the much better contrast on the OLED, it would make it appear that the brightness is actually higher. There is no HDR on both displays though. Color accuracy on the LCD is good. I measured color support for 99% sRGB and 75% Adobe RGB. So this level of color accuracy means this display is good for general purpose work such as watching videos, movies, office work. 
This OLED display has excellent color accuracy. I measured 100% sRGB and 96% Adobe RGB. So this can be used for professional color editing, like editing photos, videos, graphic design work. The other selling point for this OLED display is the 4K UHD resolution. There is no noticeable pixelation even when you look at the display up close. And this is the LCD display. It's Full HD, so you can see slight pixelation. Even though this is 4K, you will have to scale the UI to 200%. You cannot run this at native 4K, otherwise all the text will be too small. So this is the 1080p workspace with the sharpness of 4K and all the visuals are really very sharp. This is 1080p resolution on a 1080p workspace. There is slight pixelation, but overall still very usable. You can see some color difference between these two monitors because for some reason, I cannot get my color profile to load correctly on this display. Right now, I'm actually running three displays, these two plus my laptop. So what's the difference between OLED versus LCD? The selling point of OLED is the much higher contrast ratio, which allows you to see more details in the shadow areas and highlights. And due to the higher contrast ratio, the colors will appear more vibrant on the OLED as well. Another thing about OLED is the blacks will appear to be more black. It's as if there is no light at all. Right now, it's difficult to see the difference because I am showing you the displays in daytime. This is the LCD display on my laptop. So that's the classic IPS glow. And on the left is the OLED display, which is completely dark except for the circular cursor and that very dim power indicator light at the top right. And this is the comparison of the laptop's LCD versus the Nomad LCD on the left, the one with the circular cursor. Now this looks a bit blurred because it's difficult to focus my camera in total darkness. The backlight bleeding is pretty good. There is no distracting backlight glow at the edges. There's slightly more glow at the bottom right, but it's not that obvious in real life. Having an external display is very useful and can improve productivity instantly. If you have used dual display setups before, you will know what I'm talking about. If you haven't used dual display setups before, let me show you an example. So for example, I am working on the text review for this product. I can have the specifications placed here and I can write my text review here while referring to the information here. I don't have to switch between the info here and switch back to my review and switch here and switch back again. And for this particular review, I actually have a lot of photos uploaded. So now I've just placed all the photos and the links here. I can easily copy the links. I can easily see which image I want to use and come back and place those images here. I don't have to scroll up and down, up and down. It saves a lot of time. And since this OLED has good color accuracy, it can be used for work that requires color accuracy. Generally speaking, for me, I don't use displays with less than 90% Adobe RGB color coverage or color support. So having 96% Adobe RGB on this display is really good. Another thing to note is because the resolution on the OLED is 4K, when I connect this to my laptop, I actually feel the performance when it comes to editing photos to be slightly more sluggish compared to editing the same set of photos on my 1440p display on the laptop. And my laptop is running the 11th gen Intel i7 processor with Intel Iris Xe graphics. So the performance that I get here when I'm editing the colors, um, the colors, they don't update 
as instantly compared to when I'm editing on my laptop without an external display connected. But still, it's very usable. So what are the downsides? The audio quality from the two side speakers is all right. It's serviceable. When I'm listening to audio, I don't know where the sound is coming from. But the audio is still much better compared to the many portable displays I have reviewed before where the speakers are actually on the back of the display. So having the speakers on the side is a good thing. For the OLED display, there is the risk of OLED burn in. Most OLED displays have that risk. And the other downside is the included one meter long USB-C video cable is a bit short for my preference. This is one scenario where the cable may not be long enough. Let's say you want your portable display on the right side and your laptop's USB and HDMI ports are on the left side. So this cable is barely long enough. All right, it works. I guess it's long enough. So is this portable OLED display worth the money? To answer the question really depends on what you value. If you value a fantastic visual experience, this OLED display definitely delivers. The visual quality is terrific. You get the sharpness of 4K, vibrant colors, extreme contrast. It definitely looks better compared to the LCD models. However, it's kind of pricey. At the time of making this video, this is 999 Singapore dollars. So that's more than two times more expensive compared to the LCD models. The Nomad 16 is $349, which in my opinion is kind of worth the money because the visual quality is still good for an LCD display and the build quality is good. And the pricing is very competitive compared to other brands that sell displays with similar specifications. For the Nomad Pro 16, the one with the touch screen and the built-in battery, I think it's worth the money as well if you need the touch screen or internal battery. The last thing I want to say is if you are looking for a portable display that has fantastic color accuracy, you can actually find a 15.6 inch 4K UHD IPS LCD with touch screen that is less than half the price of this OLED display. You can probably find it at 400 to 500 Singapore dollars. The main difference between the color accurate LCD, which supports more than 90% Adobe RGB versus this OLED display is this has noticeably better contrast. And this is probably something you may have to see in person, like do a side-by-side -side comparison in order to see the difference for yourself because you watching this review through my camera lens, uh, it's difficult to see the visual difference. But once you see it live in person, you can see the difference straight away instantly. So what do you think about this Prism Plus Nomad Ultra 4K OLED display? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I hope this review is helpful. See you again. Bye.